My name is Mike Hernandez, and I'm just a regular dude who is passionate for adventure. Come along with me as I share my experiences and lessons I learn along the way. Oh, as long as it's in a Jeep. Oh, and one more thing. Family isn't an important thing, it's everything. All right, fam, welcome to episode 35 and phase two of the Rescue JT. So today's episode, we're gonna outline specifically the next phase of suspension components slash accessories that I've added to this awesome, awesome platform uh, known as the 2020 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon in Stingray. Um, I've had it almost a year now, as well as this kind of being our year point in the page. Guys, thank you for all your support. I really appreciate it. Today, though, before we get started, I wanted to show you something I've been promoting in my other videos. This is Be Ready Magazine, guys. It's going to be on the shelf for the next uh, couple months. This is the current issue. Uh, if you open it, you can see here that uh, we made a little centerfold here, but also a couple more pages, I believe it's seven, of information on preparedness vehicles. Uh, what's really cool and relevant about this article is as you look at the stuff that I'm going to show you in today's video, uh, the truck was in a smaller suspension setup, a little bit more um, shorter, but also on 37s there, you can see them, uh, and all-terrain. So that's why we're doing this video. This article is just a real basic kind of setup for preparedness vehicles and everything that you need there so you can get that focus. Uh, but I know you guys have been dying and asking to see <laughs> what the truck has on it now. So we'll go ahead and get into that without any further delay. Let's get started. All right, I'm gonna try and shoot this video first person like this. See if my arm gets tired. Uh, so here we are. This is my 2020 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon. I almost said Wrangler, I get mixed up sometimes sometimes in my other videos too i've said uh rescue jk and it just drives me crazy but i guess old habits die hard so when we're looking at it here this is the steam gray the 2020 uh brand new jeep gladiator that is relatively new to the market as of this year um, the major difference you're going to see here as we walk around is that it is on the evo four and a half inch overlander enforcer suspension and what's really great about this suspension is it gave me enough space one to run these really great 38 1350 r17 um, falcon tire mts uh, that aren't available to the market yet i have been getting a lot of questions and even a kind of frantic dm about man i can't buy them i need them by this weekend and sorry guys they were supposed to be released here uh this year and during this summer but because of what's going on in the current state of everything uh, they are going to be pushed back so let me get out of the frame here you can see uh, at the very front of this like in the other video uh, it's the genrite aluminum front bumper uh, with the brush guard there it's got a worn xeon 10s winch and it also has the factor 55 flat link monster there in the front really great setup it's a uh, Flat tow rated, so I can attach this to my RV, flat tow it to another vehicle, whatnot. Uh, Generate makes excellent products here in the United States. I love them. That's the front of it. Um, I got the factory Mopar grill in the matte black. And again, this is Sting Gray. Uh, as we make our way to the sides, oh, you can see here. Uh, and all this stuff, if you want more information about the stuff that I'm talking about, um, there are videos that are specifically outlining everything. So this is a diode dynamics corner piece in another video that I shot if you guys want to look through the episodes there. Just to kind of give it a little bit more of a flow, um, the factories are yellow or orange or whatever you want to call them. And it just didn't look right. So it still has the, the, the light in there to make it legal, but it's got a clear lens on the outside. So let's take a look here at the Offroad Evolution suspension. I don't know if you can see in there. I have the track bars uh, front and rear. Um, and then when you look on the side here, I opted for the Fox uh, Performance Series 2.0s in the front without the resis. Um, I went that route just because I wanted to, one, complete it sooner. And if you guys know, if you're going like 2.5s 
or you know bypass or something like that or the, the ones with the reservoirs it's a lot more expensive so i wanted to try this i saw some other uh, guys who were running it and it was just fine so i figured to go that that way first um, as we make our way around here you can see i have the uh, pro 6 on the top i just got some uh, custom covers for that uh, you can do the Fieldcraft Survival logo uh, along with KC's. They only come with the yellow KC um, signature logo on them. So I, I had those wrapped. Well, I had the, um, the logos made and then I wrapped them. So uh, all that is the Pro 6 and the new mounting solution from KC Lights. Um, and that's really the front. Oh, you can also see I changed the... What's it called there? If you keep seeing me look up, it's because I have my screen and I'm having a hard time kind of getting everything in there. All right, as we make our way towards the back here, try to get more light. Um, you can see here in the rear of the vehicle, I have my Snowmaster, my 60 liter Snowmaster. Uh, I added power, you can see back there. In another video, you guys can check that off if you want to see the install. Uh, but also, what's new to the back here is this mount for the Snowmaster. This is also from Revel Off Road, uh, the same manufacturer who made the rack. Uh, what's great about this platform is that it allows you to mount a fridge freezer combination back there, whatever brand you decide, uh, without drilling the bed. And then on the top here, you can see uh, my high lift jack mounted to the to the side here. Um, that's the rear of it. I'm going to add some more panels here in the in the back because I also want to add you know, my um, CO2 to have the CO2 canister as well as my ARB up front. But let's get up top so I can show you how I mount that full size spare up top. Okay, so right here you can see I have an NFAB tire carrier and really it's just the tire strap, the, the, the tri tire strap that comes in, mounts to the actual still pieces of the rack securing that big massive 38. Uh, yes, I did pick that up here by myself. I should have shot a video of it. Uh, I don't want to do it again, so sorry guys, you can't see that. Uh, but it holds it for now. I'm probably going to change this just because I'd rather have a hard mounted solution, meaning uh, metal or steel, and the straps are fine for now. But um, just as I'm kind of evolving, that's one of the things I do want to change. And then what's great about the rack, like I said prior, is that it just gives you all the options you need to mount whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. So on the side here, on the passenger side in the rear, you can see I have my Max Tracks. Um, set up back here and I do have the max tracks actual uh, pins that you can get in a set and they're pretty inexpensive but when you look at the max tracks they're wider than the panel for the rebel off-road rack so what I ended up doing is getting a oh, I forget the name I think it's an RCI or something like that I'll put it right here in a text on the screen um, if it's wrong but I ended up having to modify it and it's essentially this just bracket here that the pins bolt to and then the bracket itself bolts to that. I wouldn't recommend it um, unless you don't have any other options. I know there's some other companies who will make uh, the bracket for it, but just a note that the um, panel for the rack is not wide enough for these mounting points on max tracks. So on the driver's side here, I have this four gallon, 15 liter is it? Yeah, 15 liter Rotopax uh, gas can. And um, I do have space to add another one. So what I'm gonna do is either, you know, move this closer this direction or that direction, add another Rotopax. I'm looking at the black one um, to fit gear and also like my uh, air hose rather than having it loose in the truck, air hose and whatnot. That way I can just open it here, move that down and then access, let's say my CO2. Uh, 10 pound tank or 20 pound tank is what I'm thinking um, Right here and then run, you know the group or for myself. So just an idea uh, Of how I'm probably gonna change it here in the next couple days or weeks Let's make our way into the cab here As we go in here you guys have seen this that mount is from weapon gear a uh, really cool company If you guys are interested in that they make Jeep specific mounts and then my iPad also running up front with the 67 design mounting solution up top that I also have a spot for my iPhone. Um, other than that, I'm pretty bone stock here in the front. We'll move to the back to kind of show you what else I got in here. So I do have children, so you guys see here that I do have a booster seat in the event of one of the little ones gets in. Um, on the top, I have the famous baby Groot that goes with us everywhere. I just replaced him. You will also sometimes see Porgy in there. Um, I have a fire extinguisher 
For whatever reason, this summer I have gone through three of these bad boys because I have responded to three separate fires. One of them was my own if you're following me on Instagram, I posted that up there. Let's see if I can run some footage here for you guys of that. Uh, but also a couple of other guys who got into some trouble just randomly on the freeway and I was able to um, help and put out the fires. Make sure you're getting an A, B, and C rated fire extinguisher. This is a must have. And then I have it on the uh, JCR mount here that goes directly to the roll bar and the bottom of the top. Let's make our way to the other side. Right here on the passenger side just gives you another view of the 67 designs mount. These are just the corners. I also have a similar setup with a rail system that 67 has, but in the Wrangler, my wife's Wrangler, which you guys can look on those videos too. Um, so yeah, pretty stock. You can see the, uh, the mount there for the Glock. You can also have those over here on the passenger side if you want to run it that way. But also here, I have the Fieldcraft Survival panel system. Um, you can see this here in its current configuration with a cat tourniquet as well as a basic hemorrhaging response kit there. And what's great about this is it blows off because it's Velcro. I love Velcro. So I can put it on the front of here if I need to, on the back seat and the paneling and whatnot. And it just makes it very accessible in the event of an emergency, but also in everyday carrying situations to where you want to move it around with you. So in the rear here, you can also see I have the Fieldcraft Survival panel system. I have a complete video on this alone, uh, so make sure you check that out to see what's in there. Uh, must have for your vehicles. And then <clears throat> from the factory, these things came pretty optioned. So one of the, it's kind of funny to say it though, it's just this little bin in the bottom here that's plastic that retains whatever you have. I have a Treaty Oak, um, recovery kit in the back here. I'm gonna do a full video on this because there's so much information that for now you can just see where I stow it. And then if you come around to the back here and you pull the seat, you do have access to what's behind. Um, in this case, you can see there I have the Bluetooth speaker and then the other side there is a little spot for storage. That can be locked. If you see on the top here, there is a keyhole. You use the key that you get from the factory and you can secure whatever you need to behind this seat. Originally, I thought it also locked this, but come to find out that no, this can still open. It'll just do the back. Let's check out the other side because I have something in there. Here's another view of that fire extinguisher and the way it sits in the cab. It does rattle a little bit, so I put some weather stripping on the back side of it to sandwich in between the uh, metal Molly system from JCR and the fire extinguisher, so that mitigates a lot of that, but just something to think about um, if you're looking at it. In the back here, you can see this little pull tab. I typically have stored this bag that has a NOCO lithium battery. But this last course that we taught in Jerome, I noticed that it had expanded and broken open. So a little disappointed in NOCO. Guys, uh, I'll probably be reaching out to them and their customer service and see if they can do anything about it. But it is a, a lithium battery pack. You can see here it cracked all the the screws in there um, with that battery pack expanding over time. It is about hmm, five years old, six years old maybe. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna have to have a conversation with them on that. Um, when you open up here though, you can see at the moment because of the course, I have my uh, 11 and a half inch folded truck gun in here. So we'll move that out of the way. Um, on the bottom, I have the air hose for either my CO2 tank or my ARB air compressor, as well as the inflator slash deflator here. Inflate, deflate, and it's got a digital display. Um, I also have tire deflators in here, a set of mechanics gloves to protect your hands, and of course, a crayon because I have children. <laughs> um, when you look here, these two items, I actually use a lot. They are a surplus pair of Gore-Tex jacket and pants and if you don't know what Gore-Tex is it's essentially the same material you use for your, your tents or your canopies right so what's great about it is it'll give you extra insulation from the elements if you get caught in a storm or if you have to sleep in your vehicle this will give you you know that just a little added layer of protection this last course I was saying that and as I said it it rained on us so it kind of proved me right and then on the bottom here I have a disposable um, stretcher in the event that we need to carry somebody out. Uh, my wife put that in there and haven't had to use it. Hopefully I never do. 
And that's what I have here. Um, you can see the factory also has a little slot here for when you take your top off your doors or whatever hardware uh, that you're removing from the factory. They can just easily get right there and then you shut it and it's out of mind, out of sight. So the new lift, wheels, tires, you guys saw uh, in the last video, but today the new addition is the Rebel Off-Road Rack, the half rack that I have on the back. Um, a couple takeaways, there is a drastic difference, you guys, from a Gladiator that's lifted two inches on 37s to four and a half inch on 38s, the way that mine is set up now. Um, just kind of talking to some of my buddies that you've seen here on pretty popular pages, um, and even myself with the experience that I had with the small spacer kit and 37s, it's definitely doable for most people, right? If you're running 37s on a two inch lift, doable. You can get mostly anywhere you need to. Now this one in the clips that you saw today though, I wanna push it a little more uh, in terms of off-road and I need a better break over angle. And what it looks like now, especially with this wheelbase, I think I'm somewhere around 127 inch wheelbase, I think is what it is. Um, you do have to go a little higher in terms uh, of lift size to see a better break over angle, which is essentially the angle in the center of the front and rear axle and wheels. Um, so jack it up a little higher, four and a half inches is a great um, middle point. You can go six and a half if you so choose, uh, but this works excellent for me. Um, I actually am surprised because when I first started, I thought the departure anger, angle, anger, the departure angle in the rear was gonna be more of an issue and it really has not at all. Uh, it does come with the, you know, the factory Rubicon sliders and protection and it's all steel and whatnot. Uh, but I think the biggest obstacle or the biggest issue that I had starting out again was that breakover angle in the center with it being so long. Uh, the front angle is great. You know, it, it has the same angles as any of the JLs that are in the market because it's essentially the same um, front clip or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but that's it. I mean, I highly recommend everything that I'm using right now. I am nowhere at all near being dissatisfied with what I have and what I spent my money on and with those who have partnered with us. Uh, the next video that I want to roll out in terms of um, the truck is a rooftop tent video. That one's going to be self-containing itself because I want to talk more specifically why I went that direction. Um, so yeah, super excited for the progress of it. Super excited to get out and use it. It's been really difficult, like I said. You guys who are you know, first responders, I salute you. You guys who are out there uh, with law enforcement, National Guard, uh, medical staff. Uh, really appreciate everything that you guys are doing, especially right now. Uh, in the current climate. When we're looking at stuff like this to kind of end, you know, what it is that we're doing here on this YouTube page and why is this guy getting magazine articles, you know, for preparedness. There's a lot of crossover in the stuff that we talk about, whether it's hunting, preparedness, bug out, um, uh, whatever it is that's a vehicle movement, a sustained vehicle movement, it's all really relative and has some um, overlap, uh, even in the military and some of the guys uh, that I work with at Fieldcraft Survival who are a lot more knowledgeable um, in that space. Um, we are learning a lot from each other and have developed a curriculum um, that will relay that information. So as you're you know, developing vehicles like on a spectrum, right? Um, yes, this one's a little more geared towards recreational driving or off-road or crawling um, and maybe lacks in the bug out, but I'm trying to access uh, uh, all of those areas um, and then do it obviously with a lot of fun and with my family involved. So again, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for following along. I have a lot of videos in the queue. Like I said, we've been super busy on the weekends with the articles and everything that you saw. Uh, busy, busy, busy. I, you know what? There are worse things to be complaining about uh, and busy is definitely not one of them. So guys, like, subscribe, share this. Uh, We've been here a year. We're going to be here, you know, as long as uh, you guys want to see more videos, we'll keep doing these and I will catch you on the next one.